Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mitzi Bananamore coming to you from The Button Club. I'm here with none other than Michael Zegan, who also is Joel Maisel, and many other characters. In fact, you were uh, Dwight in uh, Letterman. I was Dwight the Troubled Teen. You know, I French kissed David Letterman. Uh, I didn't know that. I know uh, the character you want to play the most is uh, Groucho Marx, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think I said that uh, once or twice, yeah. And why do you want to play Groucho Marx? There hasn't been a movie uh, made about Groucho or the Marx Brothers that I know of. I don't know as much as I used to know about them. Well, uh, if you're going to work on a biopic, I, I, I suggest <laughs> you do a little homework. Right. Really study. I know. Um, I swear, I used to know a great deal about it, and it's just uh, the years have kind of, you know, wore down on my brain a bit. A little too much of this, you might, a little yeah. too much of that. If, you know, but by the way, how else are you going to laugh? You had a sketch comedy group called the, the Hotties Galore. Hotties, with the S being <laughs> a money sign. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about that. Well, I, uh, yeah, I wasn't prepared to talk about that, but sure. Uh, I guess you, you really did your research. Well. Um, like I, like I you with Groucho, you yes. know? <laughs> Hotties Galore was... Uh, with the dollar sign. With were the dollar sign. Were you trying to, you know... Well, we were trying to separate our... And like rap? No, this, this was... Was it a two live crew kind of a thing? No, this was pre-twerking. And uh, I think we were just kind of trying to differentiate ourselves from the other Hotties Galore that you might find when you look up Hotties Galore. On, on the internet. How do you, it was just a bunch of friends and uh, you know, we graduated college, we were doing sketch comedy in college and then we came to the city and started doing it here and we would rent out a theater space and have a, a weekend of shows and it was great, it was really fun. Now, uh, is it true that you use a noise machine to fall asleep? What is going on here? Yeah, uh, yes, yes I do. Well, honey, you and I would be great bed buddies because I cannot sleep without a fan on to save right? my life. Yeah. I start nitpicking every noise I hear. I'm like it's scratching at the wall. Mm -hmm. I need a and none of this modern stuff with like a forest, you know, and then I'll just no, keep no, no, waiting no. for the next like monkey and the no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I need not even a beach, nothing. I need, yes. No, I I'm going to wait for the next wave. I need that white noise. Now, I also love, hold on, I got my notes here. My papers aren't as good as they used to be. You started acting when you were five, right? Not professionally, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, it was, it was my, my dream since I was five, I'd say. Did you think that it was playing a character or make-believe or pretend that really did it for you? And was there a moment where you made someone laugh and it gave you a certain feeling? I did this production of Annie with all these kids my age and I was, I was Rooster and I remember coming out onto, onto the stage and my grandfather was sitting in like the second row and I just, I, I you know, zoned in on him and, and I saw he had this big smile and he was laughing and uh, it was, I mean, that was it. And that's the exact thing I'm looking for in that question. That's what I'm digging for. Because I think when you see that you sparkle someone, that, that they respond to you, there's like a comedic Velcro feeling, like two puzzle pieces coming together. When I see someone laugh, I don't care. It's because I just hurt the out of myself. Or because I said something funny. Right. Or someone died. You know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. as long as it's a laugh, it's a great coping mechanism in life. You know, also, I grew up in the 80s, and there were a lot of movies during the 80s that I think were geared towards kids. You had, you know, The Goonies, you had Stand By Me, um, E.T. I, I don't know if you've uh, seen that. Yeah. No. <laughs> what makes you laugh? What makes me laugh? Yeah, right out loud, LOL. You make me laugh. Yeah? <laughs> they can, don't tease the animals. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, um, Dumb and Dumber's a masterpiece. <laughs> uh, Citizen Kane, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, I Do think you wanna so. sit around and watch Citizen Kane hung over on a Sunday? <laughs> All right, is there a, a comedian that makes you laugh 
hotter than anyone. I, I was always such a big fan of Robin Williams. He was, he was always my favorite. When I hosted Saturday Night Live in 1982, Steven Spielberg brought him as a guest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the two of them watched. I was like, oh, my God, I got to do this in front of Mork? I was terrified. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. You know what I also like? I like a spit take, and I'm wondering if I can put some liquid in my mouth and see if you can make me spit it out. You ready for it? Um, knock, knock. <laughs> Okay, let's skip to the next one. Okay, what's a foot long and slippery? A slipper. Okay, one second. How does a, how does a rabbi make coffee? He brews it. <laughs> he brews it. Oh, that's some borscht belt yep. humor. I love it. Good. The food is so awful. Yeah, and such small portions. It's the best. <laughs> Michael Zegan, long-time fan, first-time caller. Well, thank you. Thank you. Same. What up, Zegan? Oh, yes. Okay. 